In this video, I'm going to cover a brief history for those that are interested in the current state of the DisplayPort mode of the NeoFreeLink, and also sharing the holy grail of customization regarding the visuals you see while using its DisplayPort mode. As some may be aware from my review video, the NeoFreeLink had a pretty rough start with its DP mode. While looking good enough for the YouTube reviewers to praise its PC VR visuals, it did have a fatal flaw that was seemingly missed by many and the root cause of its image having some distortion. While the image was good in the sense of render clarity, it did suffer with some pretty nasty scaling issues, with everything being taller than it should, along with some pretty bad barrel distortion and chromatic aberration. Long story short here, over in the Pico Discord there were efforts to improve this, but a pesky flip resolution that was apparently unable to be truly corrected without breaking the DisplayPort mode for MD users, there was a little bit of hope lost. But then comes along Doobie13 with a post on Reddit, taking matters into his own hands, hacking the driver, and changing those height and width values to make SteamVR receive an image without the vertical stretch, showing it could be done without crashing. Now this was a silver bullet. Taking this knowledge to Pico, they implemented this into their driver, doing further distortion correction based on the new values. However, the image was scaled correctly, but was a pretty low resolution reported to SteamVR. Upon my request, I asked them to increase this to about 1.4 or 1.5. This has dramatically improved the image, but now is more demanding resolution to run at SteamVR's default 100%. This has been the current state of DisplayPort mode since. I've not done a video covering this since the review, as I was always pushing for more and hoping they could open it up. It is great, it's extremely clear now, but it can always be better. For some, the distortion still isn't perfect, and for some, the chromatic aberration still isn't perfect. While both issues are now much better on the DisplayPort mode compared to standalone, the two issues are not entirely helped by the nature of the Pico Neo Freelink's lenses. As mentioned in my review, the lenses will not blur outside the sweet spot, but they will distort. Equally, depending on the distance the lenses and any glasses or prescription lenses used, you can amplify the effects of chromatic aberration. Personally, when I compare across all my headsets here, the chromatic aberration in DisplayPort mode is at the same point as the lenses that my Quest 2 is completely blurry. Nevertheless, having control for correction over this would be very welcome. Enter the new, fully configurable DisplayPort drivers. These files allow complete control over the image produced to SeamVR. You can lower the render scale if you want to change that. You can adjust the FAV values, the viewport size, the render res per eye, both vertical and horizontal separately. Everything is possible, including the distortion mapping and chromatic aberration correction positioning, all configurable through an INI file. Now these files are intended for advanced users. But with some experimentation amongst the community, it will allow sharing of configurations to better improve the image in DisplayPort mode, with the end goal of a universally agreed value being put into the official drivers. Like mentioned in my original review, the standard faceplate for me really doesn't fit my face, so straight away just by changing the faceplate to a 3D printed solution, or cut up Pico 4 faceplate as shown in this video, I'm in a much better position for the lenses, and have improved the image even before starting with the configuration files. These configurations have been requested for some time. They offer absolutely full control and will now allow the Pico Neo for Link to truly shine, in my opinion, as one of the best PC VR headsets you can buy right now. Pre-warning, before this installation procedure, these files are intended solely for DisplayPort use. As such, the default DisplayPort values will immediately break the image to wireless Pico Link. Only use these files if you plan to only use the DisplayPort feature. With that out of the way, let's cover how these get installed. Start by making sure your headset PUI or the Pico OS is fully up to date in standalone mode. There were improvements made along the way also transfer into PC use, so if you've never updated since unboxing your headset, absolutely do so now. Next, we'll be making sure you have the latest Pico link installed. As of this video, the version is 1.2.9.1. It is also good practice to have SteamVR and Pico link installed in the default C drive locations. This stops any conflicts with the SteamVR add ons that Pico use. With that baseline set, now we can grab the files and transfer them into our driver folder. Grab the beta driver zip file from the Pico community forum here, the link will be in the video description. Head over to where it is saved, extract the zipped files to a folder, and go into the folder. Copy all four of these files here. Next you will need to ensure SteamVR and Pico link is closed. Go over to your desktop, right click the Pico link icon, and click open file location. This will bring you to the install directory of the Pico link. Click into the driver folder, the bin folder, and finally the Win64 folder. For those without a desktop icon, go to the file location as shown on screen. This is where you need to paste in your new driver files. If you plan to use wireless Pico link at any point, 
make a backup of the RVR plugin INI and the driver.dll files. These will need to be transferred back in when required. And you also need to remove the distortion INI and distortion DLL before using wireless Pico Link. Alternatively, just reinstall Pico Link to revert everything back to normal. Now you have the files in place, you will need to allow editing so your changes can be saved. Let's start with the RVR plugin INI file. Right click this and go to properties. Go to the security tab and click on the Windows user that you are using. In my case here, this is users, desktop users. Once this is highlighted, click the edit button to change permissions. With this new window open, click the user as you did before so it is highlighted and tick the box that says full control. Click OK, confirm you see all the options ticked under your user and then click OK again to close out of the properties window. You will now be able to edit and save changes to the RVR plugin INI file. Repeat this process for the distortion INI file. Once both are done, and before you edit any values inside, start Pico Link, check over your settings for DP mode, set in 72Hz or 90Hz as required, as this will have been reset if you've reinstalled Pico Link, and change any launch preferences. Personally, I leave this to auto start Steam VR option ticked, and then you just click save. Now connect up your headset. Start Pico Link from standalone, so you end up with the black screen ready for DP mode, just as you normally would, and then start DP mode from within the Pico Link PC software. If at this point you don't have Auto Start Steam VR enabled, launch Steam VR manually. If everything has gone well, you'll be booted into Steam VR just as you normally would, with no change to your DP image. Now this has been booted up for the first time, you can start tinkering. Exit Steam VR and close Pico Link software on the PC, leaving your headset in the DP mode with its black screen. I suggest this as you will need to restart Steam VR for any changes made to the Distortion INI or RVR plugin INI. I will suggest doing the file changes, saving, and then launching Steam VR directly. You do not need PicoLink software to start Steam VR. A quick way to do this is to pin the Steam VR launcher icon to your taskbar. That's it. You now have full control over the DisplayPort driver to Steam VR and can relatively quickly make changes. While you can edit the values in real time, it really doesn't take long to launch into Steam VR between changes. For a quick cheat sheet, I've already personally gone through adjusting several values already to note how they change the image. This is the notes on distortion file linked in the description and the picture attached as a comment to the community post. Now this is pretty advanced stuff, but with the configuration any files, it does allow easy changes with no more hacking into the driver. I hope those that are interested and do experiment with this can relate their tweak values back into Pico community website where the files are located and also the Pico community discord where I'm always active. Been a long time coming, but it's finally here. I can't express enough gratitude to Doobie13, also known as Lero on the Pico Discord, and the Pico dev team members that made this possible. While this isn't a fix-all solution, it does allow that fine control of exactly how you want your new Freelink image to look. And I can finally rest easy and tick that big, bold line off my request list to Pico. Cheers guys, and have fun.